Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of From a Woman to a Leader. And today, it's going to be an interesting discussion, something a little bit different than what I do usually. Usually. We're going to talk about driven by passion from Ironman to empowerment. And I'm super excited to host Jen Rulon here with me. And Jen is a triathlete. And I will let you actually, Jen, I mean, welcome. And I will let you kind of show what you do. I think that will be probably better. Of course. Of course. I get it. I get it. I, uh, you know, I think back in the days, I think my my ego would tell everybody that I'm a 15 time Ironman triathlete. I, I've been to the Ironman world championship in 2017. I'm a speaker, I'm an author, I'm this, I'm that, you know, but I think, I think as I look as, at my life now, I have, that is, that's not who I am, right? That's what I did. But mm-hmm. now I am a woman who lives unapologetically in Costa Rica and trying to empower others to do the same. Now, I am not in Costa Rica now. I am in Michigan visiting family. I am in my uh, my niece's bedroom who's 15 years old and she's a huge sports fanatic, which my <laughs> brother absolutely loves. But anyways, yeah, I'm here visiting family and life happens. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I feel that for me, I am almost 52 years old and I'm learning how to live unapologetically and with boundaries and, and it's hard. I think sometimes that might be a little bit harder than, you know, getting ready for 15 Ironmans. So yeah. Yeah. And you chose the life that you wanted, where you wanted to live. That's very courageous living in Costa Rica and, and following your passion. And we're going to talk about that. But first, let's start kind of, if you, if you're okay with that, just to share a little bit about your journey. And, and how did you get to even, uh, you know, doing triathlon? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. um, Yeah. I, um, it was 1989. I was watching the ABC Wild World of, World of Sports, and I don't know um, if your followers know of that. Of that, it was very popular in the United States, and it was um, the tagline was the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. And the agony of defeat is this guy rolling down a hill um, and uh, snow like skiing, like he's just tumbling, right? But it was the 1989 and it was the, I was watching the Ironman World Championship in Hawaii with, um, and if you don't know what an Ironman is, an Ironman is a 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike and a 26.2 marathon run. So I was watching the pros uh, doing the race. I was watching Mark Allen and Dave Scott doing that. And at this time I was 17 years old. So I saw these guys doing the race and Mark Allen won that day of, at a time of like eight hours and six minutes, something like that. And then all of a sudden, an hour later, Paula Newby Frazier comes in and she, she was the first female to cross in, in almost nine hours. And I thought to myself, well, if she could do that, I could do that. Right. I mean, that was my immediate reaction. And <clears throat> excuse me, I did a TEDx talk about this. Because mm-hmm. I didn't feel like I had a very um, bond, a strong bond with my dad because I wasn't sports orientated, right? I, you know, sure, I played softball. I was a cheerleader. I loved football. You know, I could throw a spiral, but I didn't have that huge knowledge like my brother did. My brother was all about the basketball, baseball, hockey, football, which is ironic because now my niece is exactly the, uh, the uh, pinnacle of my, of my, of my brother. But, um, so I thought, well, maybe if I do this Ironman, maybe I'll get my dad's attention and see that I am athletic. Right. And, um, but when I did my first Ironman, it was in 2002 at the Ironman at Ironman, Wisconsin, uh, six. And I told my family, uh, I told my mom and my grandpa at the time that I was going to do the Ironman world championship. And my grandpa was like, well, when you go, I'm going to go with you. I'm like, okay. But when I did Ironman, Wisconsin, I, uh, 
I did that six weeks before my 31st birthday. And I said to them, I was going to do an Ironman by the time I was 30. So I did accomplish that goal. But when I crossed the finish line, I realized I didn't need my dad's validation anymore because I validated myself. That's wonderful. And you know, at the age of 17, to even think of something like that, right? Right. It's, to me, Iron Man seems like superheroes. Oh, <laughs> level, thank right? you. I mean, it's like, it's right. not real. Like, how right. can a human being even do this thing? Like, right. for eight to, I don't know how many hours, like the limit, yeah. but it's like, it's 17 hours is the cutoff, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I average... You know, my first one was under 13 and then I find like, I finally went under the 12 mile or the 12 hour mark. So I, my last Ironman was a 10, 10, 46, 47. I still remember it to this day. And, and um, I, you know, I knocked off over two hours. I mean, that's crazy in my lifetime, you know? Um, but those that are out there for 16, 17 hours. Oh my gosh. Like that's, I think that's more mentally challenging than what I put, what I, what I did. So, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you said, so you mentioned one thing, you mentioned setting goals, like you, yes. you wanted to achieve Iron Man to cross the finish line mm -hmm. by the age of 30, which you did. Mm -hmm. So I did. obviously powerful setting Thank goals you. and meeting them. Yes. And you talked about the mindset. So tell me a little bit about how the mindset, what kind of mindset do you need mm. to even do something like that? Right, right. You know, my first, I would say my first five Ironmans was all about doing, completing it, finishing the race, right? But then I realized that if I wanted to go to Hawaii, I needed to race the race. I didn't need to cross the finish line to finish. I needed to cross the finish line to win. And so I think my, my mindset in the beginning, I've always been very goal orientated. I always have set dreams. I think I did vision boards before vision boards were even popular. And I would have them all around my, sort of like what my niece has, like I would have them around my bedroom and like, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to, you know, I wanted to work with marine mammals and, and go see killer whales out in the wild and things like that. And I did, you know, I got to see that. Um, but I remember like, I think, you know, people have asked me about my mindset, like, how did you manage that? And I, I think it was just based through my training and then trusting my coaches that I hired and, you know, a coach needs a coach, right? So I've always felt that having that support system, whether it's your family, whether it's your friends, whether it's your coach, um, really helped me with my, with my mindset because they provided the plan for me. They provided the plan. My coach provided the plan. I would go and do it. And then if I started getting in my head, I would reach out to my coach and be like, Hey, why am I not hitting these numbers? What, what, you know, whatever. And then we'd start looking at, you know, okay, are you eating enough? Are you drinking enough water? How's your sleep doing? You know, you'd start looking at all of these things. Right. And then, um, I think it just, I, I think the mindset started at a young age because, I was a goal getter, right? Or a goal setter, mm -hmm. right? Goal getter. And then um, and then I just started applying it to my everyday life and just started, you know, taking goals each day. Like if I looked at, or here's a great example. If I looked at my training like six weeks out from my Ironman, I would flip out because it was a six hour bike. And then a two and a half hour run or a 245 run, a 4,000 meter swim. Like it was a lot. And so I'm like, wait a minute, that's six weeks out. Why are you even looking at that when you have to focus on today's workout? 
Absolutely. So there are so many nuggets here. So first of all, (laughs) setting goals. This is powerful. This thing is powerful. Uh, Visualizing. Visualizing. Whatever works for you. I love vision boards. Uh, I, I have actually clients who did it today. You can actually do it on the computer uh, yeah, when I started I do. doing visual boards I, I used to cut yes, kind of magazines cut. and all that stuff <laughs> yep right same uh-huh yeah some people like to do it like old school way some people like to do it yeah. like with the computer some people like to imagine right to do like yeah. meditation every person do it differently but visualizing yes. and and then you mentioned the mindset I'm there to win not mm-hmm. just to finish cross the finish line. Cross. I'm there mm-hmm. to win. I'm going mm-hmm. there to win. That's the mindset I'm going with. Yeah. And then taking smaller steps towards yeah. achieving that goal. So you're not overwhelmed yes. with like, okay, how am I going to finish the six weeks or whatever? Right, right, and- right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, cause that can be really overwhelming and you know, my athletes that I coach, I currently coach triathletes get ready for an Ironman, a cycling event, half Ironman, whatever that might be. Um, I tell them, they're like, well, can we have our workouts for, you know, like six weeks out? I'm like, I can drop in what the estimated workouts will be. I said, but I don't want you to focus on that because you got to focus on this week, right? You got to focus on today. You got to focus on this week. And, and that seems to help them quite a bit when I do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And by the way, although I'm not in sports, I'm in tech. I really love the connection between the sport, whatever sport you do, whatever physical endurance you do to success in life. And I want to touch it also in your life, right? I mean, sure. because the physical, the physical, you know, you, yeah, it's hot. Too. It's hot. I got hot all yeah. of a sudden. You yeah. know? That's what happens when you're 52. <laughs> life changes. I know. <laughs> I can relate. I can relate. Right? I even uh, had a guest talking about menopause and pre-menopause and all that. Good. <laughs> so the physical endurance, for me at least, helps help me become more resilient and powerful in other aspects of my life as well. And I'm very far from Iron Man. I'm just doing like small things, but for me, it's huge. huge. And I want to ask you how being able to run so many, like to finish an so many Ironmans and also in Hawaii eventually that you did in 2017, how it impacted everything else in your life? Oh, fitness, fitness for me is a non-negotiable. And, and when people tell me that they don't have time for this or that, I'm like bull BS. It's absolute BS because if it's important to you, you'll make time. Right. And I know there's a quote out there that talks about that. You know, prime example, like, you know, I had to get up, I had to get up at five o'clock yesterday morning so I could go to the 545 so I could get down to take my mom, to meet my mom at her doctor's appointment, right? But that was, that's because I have to do that. Like the fitness for me is a non-negotiable. So fitness, um, yeah, you don't have to, and that's, that's what I tell, like when I'm, when I do my the Everyday Healthy Human podcast, that's an ongoing thing about fitness is that we all, once you start having fitness or some type of movement in your life, it, I swear, life starts to skyrocket. You know, like you start feeling better about yourself. You start maybe dropping a couple pounds. Maybe you start adding a little bicep. Maybe, you know, you start seeing the changes in your body and all of a sudden you're like, well, geez, if I, if I'm, if I'm walking 10,000 steps a day for every day, then man, what is that going to, you know, what if I add um, a five minute run to it? What if I add, um, what if I get on a bike? What if I get on a Peloton? What if I go to a CrossFit class? What if I go to a HIIT workout? Like the fitness is going to 
amplify your life because you're just going to feel better about your choices that you make. Absolutely. Did I answer and, your question? Uh, sort of, but I wanted to touch base. I mean, absolutely. I agree with everything you said. I wanted to ask you how it helped you to amplify oh. your life, not just oh, the physical activity, right? And, and yeah. crossing all the finish lines and all that, but how yeah. it impacted the rest of your oh, life. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's my world, right? Like I went from, you know, uh, a triathlon coach who decided to go get her, you know, I got a, a certificate from the USA triathlon, um, uh, sanction. And then I wanted to continue on with it to start my full-time job. And my full-time job is being a triathlon coach and an author and a speaker um, I went back and got my master's degree in kinesiology with an exercise science emphasis in it. I um, I started my own company, genrulon.com. And people are like, well, what do you do? And I'm like, well, I do a lot of little things. I do a lot of, a lot of things, but my main focus is coaching triathletes to cross the finish line with a smile. That's my tagline. And so it, it, that fitness changed my trajectory drastically. I met my uh, ex-husband as a, as a, you know, we were the triathlon couple. We were that power couple, right? And um, we, I mean, we were together for 18 years and we just recently are, went through a divorce, but um, we were, you know, we were the power couple and we were that couple that focused on fitness and our business um, and that that's something that I can share now with my athletes is like, y'all, I did a, we did a really good job with our fitness. We did a really good job with our, our businesses and our jobs, but we probably could have done a way better job with our relationship. Right. And, um, and so like fitness has played a huge role in my life over the last 20 I mean, 25 years, I mean, actually 30 years because my dream was, um, it was in 89 when I saw that. So yeah. over 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, I'm sorry to hear about your divorce. Thank uh, you. And, uh, it seems like sport has been a, a vehicle for you to pursue your dream life, to become yeah, a speaker and an author and a businesswoman. Yeah. And also I wanted to talk about Costa Rica because you, yes. I know that right now you are in Michigan, but you actually right. live in Costa Rica. Can you share a little bit about that? How yeah. did you get there? Right. So I, it was in 2019 and I, and I, this was, um, I was doing my, la I was doing Ironman, Ironman Florida, and I was out at mile one and a half of, um, I was at at mile one and a half and I, I looked out to the, the ocean and I said, all right, God, I, I need your help. I need two things from you. Either one, I cross the finish line to Ironman, Florida. I place first or second in my age group and I go to Kona again. Or two, I cross the finish line. I have the best race in my life. Doesn't matter what place I'm at and I'm done with Ironmans. Cross the finish line, had the best race in my life. life. I placed seventh in my age group and I was like, I'm done. I'm retiring. And so when I got back from that race, I told, I, I talked to my ex. I was like, I think I want to take a girl trip down to Costa Rica. And I'm like, I need a beach. I need no Wi-Fi. I need, you know, whatever. And he's like, oh, okay. You know, and at first he was like hesitant because, because he's like, well, what, can't you go to Mo Miami or something? I'm like, no, I just want to go to a place where there's like, I don't want to speak the language. I just want to sit and not talk about triathlons. Well, long story short, my girlfriend wasn't able to go. So I went by myself and I just sat on the beach and cried and cried because I was like, oh my God, I'm giving up the sport that I've known for 30 years as an athlete. Like, what am I doing? So that was my first time I saw Costa Rica. And then I started talking with a girlfriend and then I met her down um, from Canada. We went down in 2020 after the whole COVID thing. Costa Rica finally opened up. Went down there with a, her and a whole bunch of her friends, girlfriends. And then, um, and then at one point, um, my my ex and I separated. 
And I was like, I'm going to go to Costa Rica for seven weeks because I don't know what else to do right now. I just need to sit. I just need to figure out what's going on. And it made me realize those seven weeks made me realize I'm not on vacation anymore, right? I could technically live here. So uh, we, we, I filed for the divorce and uh, I, I, at that time I lived in San Antonio, Texas. And I thought, you know what? I think I can make a move down to Costa Rica. I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know where I'm going to live, but I'm going to try it out. And I did. I moved down December 30th, 2021. I connected with um, a woman who had like three little houses. She was Canadian. So I thought, shoot, you know, I can stay with her like, you know, and so I rented uh, uh, her space for three months. And then I started connecting really strongly with a Costa Rican family. And so we were all talking one day at, over coffee, like an afternoon coffee on the beach. And this is all in Spanish, right? They go, where are you going to live after, after you're, you know, after you stay there? I'm like, I don't know. And they go, what do you mean? I go, I don't have a place. I don't know where I'm going to stay. And they're like, oh, well, we have an apartment. You, you could stay there. I was like, what? And so I went and saw the apartment. I was like, oh my God, winter. And so I've been there ever since. And the family has been reaching out to me. They're like, we miss you down here. Come back home soon. You know, <laughs> like it's been a fantastic. And so, but you know, I, when I, when I talk to people when people say, oh, I want to move to Costa Rica or I want to move to Puerto Rico. I want to do that. I don't, what I would highly suggest, and this is something I want to talk about on my own podcast is that go down there for a long period of time. Don't go down there for a week. And then you all of a sudden, like I'm buying a house down in Costa Rica or whatever, like go down there, live down there, you know, for six, seven weeks, two months, three months, live down there. Because when I moved down there for my first three months, I was like, oh my God, what am I doing? Right. <clears throat> I put everything in a storage unit. I didn't have much. And, uh, and we didn't have, we didn't have kids. And so I just sat there going, what am I doing? And so it was, I did a three month process, right? Because with um, being in Costa Rica, I had to cross the board. I had to go do a border run every 90 days. And so, cause I'm not legally to be down. I mean, I mean, I'm legal, but I'm a digital nomad. So I could be down there for 90 days and then I have to cross the border and then I have to come back. Right. So every 90 days I was like, all right, let's reevaluate again. Where are you at now? Okay, you have a beach cruiser. You don't have a car. Your car's in in Texas right now. Your Jeep's in Texas. It's with your girlfriend. Well, why are you paying for, you know, why are you paying for car insurance? Why are you paying for this? Why are you paying for that? Go back and sell your car. Like it was just a gradual process, mm -hmm. right? It was me letting things go over a while. So long story short, it was, I knew I wanted to move down there right? But I knew it was going to take time for me to figure it out. Now, are there moments that I miss family and stuff like that? But me living in Texas, I saw my brother once a, once a, once a year, you know, same with my mom, just because I'm in another country doesn't mean I'm dead. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just, you know, I'm just in another country and it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. I think it goes back to the mindset, right? I mean, uh, it's it's something around yeah. oh you live in a different country versus you live in a different state in the U.S. that people will say oh right. okay people do that right all the time they move all states. the time right but moving out of the country well yes also people do that I did that yeah. but 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 yeah. you know but not as many and it like right. although it's not much different maybe the technicality right that you mentioned you have to right. go back and forth whatever but. <clears throat> But it's actually not that diff not that much different. It's not. It's not. And you know, there, you know, of course, you know, uh, some people just thought I was bat bat beep crazy. You know, they 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 probably did. You know, but it's not their life to live. It's mine, and that's something that I'm trying to share and implement with my friends and my followers and my athletes, like you guys, you have one life to live, right? If you make the choice 
because the choice was made for you, that's living. You don't have to make the choice for your parents or your, or your brother or your sister or whatever, or your, you know, your friends, your life is how you live your life. And you have to learn how to live unapologetically. It's like, yeah, I'm moving to Costa Rica. Y'all might not like it. That's not my problem. This is for me. This is my life. And it's, you know, and I mean, I remember, you know, my, I remember my brother said, well, you're going to do what you want to do. I'm like, yeah, I am, you know, like, but that's how you should do your life. I agree. And I think that people sometimes maybe react the way they do. I don't know if necessarily because they don't like it or because it makes them feel bad about themselves, not pursuing their dreams and look at, Oh, she goes to Costa Rica. What does he say about me? I'm right. stuck in the same place and not pursuing my dreams. So it kind of makes, right. they they reflect on themselves and how it makes them feel. And that's why they react the way they do. Sure. Sure. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. Your story is so inspiring. What do you think, you know, how can we get the courage to do those things? Because you mentioned like, okay, you decided to move to Costa Rica. You just took your things and went there for three months. And you said, I'll figure that out, which mm-hmm. you did. But that takes courage yeah. to go yeah. to the unknown, not having all the answers, make a big move. Yeah. How do you get the courage to do something? Like mm. whatever it is, it doesn't have to be moving right. the country, right? but a right. change that you want to do, but you're not sure exactly how, and you're afraid. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of, for me personally, I think sitting with myself through meditation, through journaling really helped me Um, And also being quiet about my choices because you people are going to jibber jabber and talk all day long about why you should do this, what you should do. Oh, you should go do this. Oh, you should do that. But only you know what you want, what's in your heart. And if there's a moment that you can truly sit with yourself and your higher power, whatever, who, who, whatever that might be, God, universe, whatever your, whatever your beliefs are, if you could sit with yourself daily, at least 10 minutes a day, all I ask is 10 minutes a day and just no music, no nothing. And just sit and listen into what your heart is telling you. Because the heart, because the heart knows the way. That's and there's, true. I think there's a, there, there's a quote out there, but my heart, my heart, I, cause I sat there thinking, what does my heart want? I want the ocean. I want to be by water. Like that was the biggest two things for me. So then I thought, okay, Texas has water, but it's, you know, it's, it's South and it's, I'm not really a fan of down there. Um, like I thought to myself, Texas no longer serves me. Okay. Could I go out to California? Oh God, that's expensive. Could I move out to Hawaii? Oh goodness. That's even more expensive. You know, like, like I started thinking about like, what, what do I want? I'm a Pacific ocean baby. Like I love the Pacific ocean. I love the sunset. Now this morning or the last couple of weeks, I was able to see the sunrise over a lake in Michigan. I was like, all right. So sunrise, (laughs) you got something here. I I like what you're doing here, you know? Um, but I love my sunsets. And so I started really being like, okay, what are my non-negotiables? Ocean, water, fitness, community, healthy food, you know, and that's, that was for me. Right. And, and, you know, work, I can work anywhere in the world. That's the great thing about, you know, I have, athletes in Australia, Costa Rica, the United States and Sweden. Like, and so I can work anywhere in the world. I could go to Spain for three months if I wanted to, you know, that's the great thing about my business. Absolutely. And you know, nowadays, so many of us can do that. It's true. 
yeah more than than you think you know and that's wonderful i mean i loved it i'm also working remote and uh, i enjoy the possibilities absolutely yeah 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 wow that's been so inspiring jen before we part ways share how can people reach out to you how they can find more about you and what you do of, of course um you can go to my website jen rulon r u l o n dot com I am on a lot of social media platforms. I'm on um, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. TikTok's just more for fun. I'm, I mean, I, you know, uh, and that you could check that out, Coach Jen Rulon. So Coach Jen Rulon. And then you could also go to my own podcast, The Everyday Healthy Human. And that is... Um, talking about how to live unapologetically and how to live like a fine non-alcoholic wine as we age, you know, I'm, I'm starting to see that um, a lot of my followers are women going into our climbing our second mountain. Love that climbing our second mountain. I love that. Yeah. I can very yeah. much relate to that <laughs> personally. Yeah. 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 Thank you. And I'll take all the links from you and, Put them on the show notes. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Appreciate it.